Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial in, um, uh, oh yeah, 3D Studio Max. This time, we're gonna be taking a look at lighting a scene with an HDR image or image-based lighting. Then we're gonna take this render, put it into Photoshop, and really make it sizzle like bacon. But before we can do any of that, we have to go into our scene and actually model something because all the lighting in the world isn't gonna help anybody if there's nothing to see. All right, this tutorial is about to get a bit lengthy, so if you don't wanna watch it the whole way through and want to skip to a specific part, I have annotations across the bottom of the video that you can use to skip ahead to any point in the video that you wanna see. So let's get started by modeling ourselves some DNA, kinda like we see in this image here, which will eventually be the thumbnail for this video if I ever get around to finishing this video. So I'm gonna start this all off by making myself a sphere. Just dragging it out. Uh, don't need that many segments to start because we're gonna be turbo smoothing this in a moment. And radius can be 10, segments 24. Go ahead, grab our move tool, right click those and center it up. Then we're going to right click our sphere, convert to edible poly, so we can actually edit this sucker. I'm gonna zoom in here, make sure I'm in my polygon mode and click and woo! Grow, shrink twice. Um, what's next? It looks like an eyeball or a grape or beach ball. Let's just extrude it. Extrusion, extrusion at five, that looks good. I'm just gonna kind of speed through this part here so we can get to the meat of the tutorial, which is the lighting and the post-production work. So, delete our faces up top so we have a hole at the top of our extrusion. I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit, go back up and select element selection mode. And the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna select everything we just made hold down shift on the keyboard and drag up so that I make myself a clone to element. And I'm gonna take this newly selected sphere with a thing on the top and rotate it exactly 180 degrees so it's facing back down towards the other one. Now I'm going to select, use the border selection mode, hold down so both borders are selected. I'm gonna switch back over to edge mode so that I can use my bridge. So for some reason when we bridge this, it actually caused our, uh, actually caused our edges to twist for whatever reason. You can see if we look at it like this, you can see it a little better. The edges twist. So to fix that, I'm just gonna go ahead and press okay go into our polygon mode and select this whole top half here and just spin it until our lines are straight. You can see if it's off a little bit, they step, our lines are jagged, but if we make them perfect, they're completely smooth straight across. Good. We're gonna get out of polygon mode orient ourselves back the right direction. Make sure we're in our edge mode, select all the edges in the middle and hit connect. And we're gonna connect this, we're gonna give this about mm, 10 segments looks good. Go ahead and okay that. Now the reason I did that is because I wanna pull in the center of this little rod thing to give it a more Q-tip look. So, in my vertex selection mode, and in front view, I'm going to drag and select all the vertices that are part of the rod section. Now I have to make sure I have just the middle, these middle ones selected when I go over to my modify tab and drop it down. Because whatever is selected will be the only things that are affected by our modifier. And we're going to grab an FFD 3x3x3. So let's go ahead and select that. And now you can see FFD modifier is only affecting the selected areas. It's not affecting the spheres at all, which is great because we can go ahead and drop down the FFD modifier and highlight our control points. That way we can grab onto just the control points here in the middle, grab our scale tool and scale it in. 
we want to make it decently thin and we will also grab the tops and the bottoms here so that we can scale them down a little bit and then we're actually going to bring them out like that once we're sure that looks good we can right click on it and convert to edible poly again and that will collapse our modifiers and it will be a fresh edible poly once again great moving along let's go ahead and reset our anchor point to the center of the object perfect now comes the fun part we're gonna go up to tools and select array at first array is not gonna look like it's doing anything until we check the preview box so we hit preview and still nothing's gonna happen until we mess with our world coordinates so let's adjust the x-axis oh I see so we're gonna spread these out about like that that looks good let's move that up there and that's not quite enough so we're gonna add mm -hmm. let's do 50 yeah now we're getting somewhere so we have as many as we need and we have them spaced out as far as we want them now we just need to twist them so we're gonna go make sure we're in the rotate section and start rotating them in the x-axis as well and uh, that's looking pretty good so let's hit OK we have our newly created DNA strand so let's uh, throw a quick texture on it now before I can actually use the texture I want I'm going to need to go into my render settings and scroll down to the bottom here and change our render engine from the default scan line to mental ray so make sure you're using mental ray for this tutorial all right, I'm gonna scroll up to the top since I'm already in here I'm gonna change this to a 16 by 9 ratio uh, let's, go, let's go a little bigger whoops 960 by 540 that is half 1080 HD all right so we have mental ray we have our DNA strand let's go ahead and apply a texture so I'm going to select everything in our scene apply a material to it assign to selection yes I'm gonna ch click the box where it says standard and uh, let's just go with something simple like the Autodesk metallic paint okay and they're all gonna be red at first which is fine we'll actually save that red for later but I want to make these let's make this red and I'm gonna make this one gray so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the saturation down and darken it up quite a bit uh, something like that's probably good I'm gonna make sure my flex are white and I'm gonna change our pearl to second color and I'm gonna tell it to use white so our specularity is white press OK and if we take a render alright starting to look good already alright the first step is done it's on its way to looking pretty sweet already let's move on to phase two and do some actual image based lighting now the HDR image that I'll be using to light this scene is actually from a free image studio pack that I found online so I'm gonna include a link for you guys in the description of this video where you can go ahead and download the images for yourself alright so if our DNA strand is going to reflect its environment it needs an environment to reflect so let's go up to our rendering tab and down to environment and our environment and effects window is gonna open up here we're gonna find the environment map click where it says none and we're gonna tell it to choose a bitmap press OK and it'll open up a window where we can navigate to wherever your background images are located so a quick tip to keep in mind when choosing your image to use in the background if you choose a higher resolution image the reflection will look a lot sharper in your object as you can see in this picture here but if you choose a smaller or lower resolution image the reflection will be a lot softer or more blurred out as you can see in the side-by-side -side comparison here so I actually don't want my reflections to be super sharp which means I'm going to select this smaller version of studio number 10 for my background image so let's select studio number 10 small dot HDR and I'm gonna press open 
It's going to say something about settings and uh, there's pink where there should be white. Eh, don't worry about it. Just press OK. And there we go. Our image will be in the background. If we take a render, you can see it's back there, but it doesn't quite look the way it's supposed to. So let's close this out. And before we close out our environment tab, I need to open up my material editor again and drag our environment right into one of these slots and make sure it's an instance. That way we have control over the properties of our environment texture in our material editor. So we can close that now. The first thing we need to do is change our mapping from screen to spherical environment because that's what our 3D world is. It's a spherical environment. And if we render, you can see that's been updated and perfect. Now we're almost there. The last step is to add a light in our scene. So we're going to go back over to our Create tab, go to our Lighting dropdown, and select Standard and a Skylight. So we're going to just drop a Skylight anywhere there in the scene. Now if we go check out the settings of our Skylight, we see we have the option to just pick a sky color, or we can use an environment map. And guess what? We're going to bring our Material Editor back up, and we're going to drag that same exact material into our Skylight. Make sure it's an instance, it's an instance, and we can close that down. Now, if we dare to take a render, you'll see our DNA strand fits perfectly into our environment. It's reflecting everything just like it was all really there. And that's basically all there is to it for this image-based lighting. But now comes the fun part. So now if we're looking at this scene, you can tell it's not very impressive. And trust me, I know. So what are we going to do about it? So our DNA actually fits in the background so well that it kind of just blends in with the background. It doesn't really pop, but that's okay. One of the secrets to 3D is get it close to what you want it to look like and push it the rest of the way later with Photoshop or really any other image editor that you happen to have. But before we do that, I actually want to tweak the background a little so our DNA strand is distinguishable from the background. And I'm going to add a camera in there too so we get a little bit of depth of field and a realistic camera look. So let's close this. First, I want to be able to see the background in our viewport. So I'm going to hit Alt and B at the same time on the keyboard, and that's going to bring up our viewport configurations. And I just want to check where it says Use Environment Background and press OK. Now I can kind of see, if I move around, I can kind of see what our HDR looks like. All right, next up, let's add in a camera. I'm going to get close to the look I want and then I'm going to add a camera to do the rest. All right, I'm gonna hit Control C on the keyboard to add myself a camera. Go back to my four up view and move two of these up so I have two at the same time. I'm going to have my camera. All right, so here's my perspective view and this will be my camera view. Let's just go ahead and turn safe frame on. All right, we're looking good. So I'm going to grab the target for the camera and drag it to where I want the red DNA strand to be, right here. So there's that. I'm going to move. Oh, oh, not this. I want the. All right. So that's where it is. I'm going to move it over a bit just to align it back in my camera view where it was. And uh, which one was that? Was it this one? No, it was this one. Yeah, it was this one pop open my material editor and that red one that we were saving for later, we now get to use. So we just drag that in there and we have our lone red Q-tip in amidst the strand of DNA. Next, I'm going to go into my camera settings. The first thing I want to do is give it a wider angle than it is now. So there's 35 millimeter. That's pretty good. I can move the target over a little farther. Actually, you know what? I kind of liked it better. Uh, I kind of liked it better at a longer focal length. So let's go. Let's, where was that? 40? 45. I like the way it's turning out so far. Let's go ahead and turn on the depth of field. So we're going to scroll down in our camera settings, enable multi pass effect, and change depth of field to depth of field mental ray. And if we preview it here, I don't think you'll really be able to see much of anything going on yet. I need to change the f-stop to a lower number, like 1.4. 1. 1. For those of you who don't know much about real cameras, I recommend that you do learn as much as you can, because there's so many different options that translate from real cameras 
to 3D cameras because 3D cameras are based on real cameras. And one thing a real camera can't do is go to a super low f-stop. Not yet they can anyways. So let's go 0.5. That's actually pretty extreme. You wouldn't really get that on a real lens. And if you could, it would be super expensive. All right, let's take a render and see where we're at. All right, we got some good blur going on. Our red strand is completely in focus. It's also not in the center of the screen, which works perfectly with a good old fashioned rule of thirds that I never follow. Now about making our DNA pop from the background. Let's go and open up our material editor once more and visit our lovely HDR map. Scroll down to the bottom of its settings where you see output. Drop down the output and we'll have some different options, kind of like the uh, output amount to make it brighter. Or we could even make it darker. Let's just leave it at one for now. And look where it says color map. We want to enable the color map and give this just a tint of bluish green to make the background and the foreground separate from each other. So I'm going to check RGB and I'm going to add a point. And now let's turn off blue and green and just move our red channel down a little bit and you'll see it'll start giving this greenish cast to the background which is good because now we're going to go into the blue channel uncheck the red channel and boost it up until we have this nice bluish background there we go all right i think that'll look really good let's go ahead and do our final render so let's go in our render settings and um, make sure we're in HD. 19, 20, 1080? No, that's not big enough. Let's do 2K. All right, render. Ah, I don't want to waste time waiting for this to render. So let's go ahead and fast forward. And we're done. Not too bad for render time. Let's go ahead and save our image. And uh, DNA raw to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just call it DNA raw. And yes, we do want a TIFF. And yes, we do want it to be 16 bit. Press OK. Press save. Yes, I know I'm saving over the old one. All right, that's it for our 3DS Max portion. Now we're really gonna make this thing shine in post. All right, welcome to the Photoshop portion of this tutorial where I've just realized that I rendered it way too big to actually fit in the scene and I can't see what I'm doing. 50? Well, in any case, this image is in dire need of curves. So let's go ahead and I'm going to hit Control J to make a new layer so I can save the untouched background for reference. And I'm going to go ahead and add a new adjustment layer and fine curves. So here's our adjustments and I'm just going to pull over the lightness all the way up here. Pretty close. And I'm going to give it a good old fashioned contrasting S curve here. Right there. See how much better that looks already? So let's move down from the RGB and actually select our individual colors of red, green and blue. Let's just uh, pull down our red a little bit and bring it back up in the top here. Let's go to blue and uh, let's lift the blue a bit. Little tweaks here and there really can go a long way if you tweak it just right. Uh, this is, that's not right. Do I like the green? Sure, why not? Let's keep the green. Ah, no, screw green. Actually, no, that probably should have stayed in there. All right, so that's our first adjustment. Let's go ahead and add a fancy vignette to this. We'll just make a new layer. We'll keep our black at black and we'll change our white to a darker color. Grab our gradient tool, which if you can't find it, it's sometimes hidden under the paint bucket tool. So gradient tool, make sure we're on a radial gradient and start from our red Q-tip and drag all the way out. Whoa. Come back. Come back. Come back. All right. So it looks like crap until we use our blending mode and change it to subtract. Now it doesn't look like crap anymore, does it? Actually looks pretty cool. I'm just going to go ahead and lower the opacity on this channel because we don't need it to be that harsh. Mm, 50 is good. 
Just go ahead and add a layer of noise on top of everything. So we'll make another new layer. Uh, and we're going to fill it with 50% gray. The reason I'm going to do 50% gray is when I add in my noise, just a little bit of noise, I can change it to overlay. And when you choose overlay, the gray will become transparent, leaving us with just our brighter and darker speckles of noise. And actually, let's put the noise layer below everything going on here. We can lower the opacity a bit. Let's go ahead and add one more curves adjustment. Uh, let's just click it up here. And boost the brightness just a bit farther. And then really crush the blacks. Make them as dark as they'll get. There we go. Maybe we can tweak this just a little farther style sake. Hey now, look at that. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is I want to put an accent on our depth of field. It looks pretty good now, but we can use Photoshop to our advantage to really make this depth of field look shallow. Go ahead and hit Control, Shift, Alt, and E on the keyboard all at the same time, and it'll make a stamp. And what a stamp is, is just every layer all mushed together into a solid image. So you can see how much we've already brought this to life. So I'm going to turn that back on and make a copy of it. Boop. And with the copy of our stamp, I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, and use a Lens Blur on the top layer. Let's crank up the radius. Let's just change this to 55. That's good enough. Hit OK. And our whole image is blurry, but the layer underneath is not. So what we'll do on the top blurry layer, we're going to add a layer mask and we get our brush tool. Everywhere we paint the color black onto our layer mask, it'll erase the image. And the opposite of that, if we paint with white, it'll bring the image back. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom out. Where's my navigator? I'm going to zoom out pretty far, make my brush really soft, soft as I can and really big. Lower the opacity a bit and I'm going to click right in the middle. Boom. If we zoom back in, I'm just going to make my brush smaller and paint with black right over where the red section is, making it look like the red part of our DNA molecule is completely in focus and we really blurred out the part of the DNA that was already out of focus. So that's about it for this tutorial. All that's left to do is save our new image and upload it to the internet to show it off to all of our friends. But then again, you are just sitting here at your computer listening to me talk. So there's a pretty good chance you don't have any friends anyway. But that's all right. You can always find a friend here at youtube.com slash doodlypro, a great place for all kinds of awesome tutorials, recreational chain smoking, and shots of Jack. So if you're into any or all of those, be sure to check back in here often for all that and more. But until next time, I got a date with a bowl of curry at an all-you-can-eat Indian buffet.